<laughs> so welcome. Thanks everyone for joining me tonight on a live stream. So yeah, nothing to it, right? You could just take 48 seconds and get everything framed. No problems at all. So <laughs> as you can see here, I am uh, in the actual space here and we got everything framed. We actually, today we were able to get some of the floor leveler in. And as you can see, I have a heated flooring system down there. But uh, I wanted to catch you guys up before we move into the, uh, the actual uh, mud bed shower Thursday evening. I'm hoping to have a live stream uh, on the floor level of the heating system and the mud bed. And we'll have a special guest here if I can get all of this organized. So, uh, but I had to sign in to hit like for all of you giving it to okay. All right, thanks, Tony Lee. I'm glad to see you here on YouTube. So we're actually streaming on Facebook and YouTube, but either one, give me a like on this. I really uh, would appreciate uh, any type of like, share of this video. It definitely helps out get more people. And, you know, I'm really trying to uh, make these live streams as interesting and informative as possible. I also love the fact that I could be able to engage with all of you, hear about what you guys are doing with your own projects. And um, yeah, I mean, that's really what I'm, all, I'm trying to do on this platform is just try to, uh, you know, educate as much as I can and, and, and I'm learning things as well, but also uh, just really trying to find the, the most efficient ways to get this done. And uh, this basement bathroom project, I think is perfect for any DIYer, anybody who, um, you know, is a little timid about getting into this and maybe tearing apart their actual master bath shower. I think a basement bathroom is a great place to start because it, it takes away the stress uh, because you're not you know, completely disturbing the upstairs living area. So I think that uh, basement bathrooms are a great place to start. And, uh, and yeah, so I, I'm really excited to get through all the different intricacies of, of what this takes. But this is just a four by eight bathroom, not very big at all. Uh, and it, you know, it's still amazing. You know, we're gonna get into the framing tips here. But uh, it's amazing how much uh, framing you can have into such a small space. And I'll get into why I did two by sixes on most of this stuff. Uh, and um, yeah, so let's get into it here. And I'm gonna see if I have Facebook on here as well. I don't see Facebook in the chat. They've, I'm sure there's gotta be somebody saying something on Facebook. Let me just double check that first. I'm still trying to get this chat bot thing to work correctly because I wanna make sure I get all of your comments. Um, as we're going on here. So let me just go to my channel here, see if it's live stream. Okay, it is live. There's two comments, but I don't see them on my chat bot. Okay, um, hmm. all right, I don't know why my actual, oh, there it is. Okay, we do have it, it's on. Okay, thanks, Tim, appreciate it. All right, so yeah, I wanted to show you guys uh, the course. So I'm, I'm, this, is all, this is all basically, uh, curtailed for a course that is going to step you through the entire process. I obviously don't have all of it done because I'm not even done with the bathroom, as you can see. But basically, I'm breaking this down into uh, different chapters. So you can see on the left-hand side here, I have the, the, the location, the layout, the concrete removal, uh, the rough in plumbing, go through stepping through all of those. And I really try to break this down rather than having like a, an hour long video that you're trying to watch on this, like YouTube or other places, you can go into the section that you're actually having problems with. So like the, the vanity, tra vanity trap um, in completion, you know, I kind of step it down into like three minute to five minute videos and going over some of the highlighted most important aspects to think about, along with a lot of the links too. You know, if, you don't, if you're not sure what is what, I have the link in there so you can actually go and purchase the stuff um, or just be able to reference when you go to the, the home stores what you're looking at. So um, I do, I've put a lot of effort and time into this. I have a material spreadsheet that gives you every single part, and I'm still not complete yet because I'm not done with the bathroom yet, but I have every single part in this spreadsheet that's gonna really highlight the entire expense of this thing, um, you know, so I think it's gonna be a lot of great information for you just so that you're not sticker shocked or surprised uh, by some of the, the pricing of things or at least just have a good judgment before you get started uh, rather than, um, you know, kind of just, you know, getting burned out at the end or being overwhelmed and then, and then also spending a lot more money than you want to. It's always, about, it's always great to plan ahead and I think everybody that's even 
you know, on this platform at all are people that are, are thinking ahead, being a little bit smarter about their actions and they want to do things right so that they, you know, don't have to do it again. So, you know, I think uh, the people that, you know, just having this resource, YouTube, Facebook, having all these content creators that you can uh, learn from, it's just phenomenal. And it's definitely the smartest way to go. It's, it's better than learning, like the way most of the, most of the things that I've learned have been learning the hard way. Um, but yeah, this price right now, we're about $8,600 into this. So it, that'll be continue to probably grow a little bit here because I still got to get a bunch of more materials. But uh, yeah, it's, we're re I'm really going to dissect this thing. So then if, even if you're a contractor, you know, you can really kind of get a good idea of what something like, like this costs. So then, you know, you can uh, make sure that you're charging enough to do all of this because that is a definitely a tricky thing. Um, when you're adding a whole new basement bathroom and you're trying to do that to make money, uh, there's a lot of gray areas, a lot of things that might take a little bit more time than you expect. And even the framing. I mean, it took me most, you know, a couple hours to do this uh, framing. And, uh, you, know, I, you know, I had some bits that broke on me and I had to go out and buy another one. So anytime you go to the, the depot or wherever, it's always costing you time. And if you're trying to make money doing this, those, those trips can really cost you quite considerably. But we'll get into the details. But yeah, basically, yeah, let me move myself over here. Um, this is the layout here. Uh, so the reason that we're doing it, and we'll get further into this in the video itself, but the two by six wall is to encapsulate a clean out that we had for the toilet. Uh, the back wall, obviously we're encapsulating all that plumbing in this back wall area so all that plumbing in the back here is uh you know basically going to be uh hidden behind all that framing so we want the two by sixes there and then uh basically two by six for the front wall which i don't have built obviously but i, I wanted to leave it open so i can get all the great footage for the shower pan now typically i mean if this was uh you know a job that i was just doing without doing all this video stuff everything would have been framed but uh, I needed to uh, be able to get some access to get some good visuals in here. So I left the front wall out, but I'm doing a pocket door. And as you can see in this diagram here, the pocket door is going to slide into the shower area. And these pocket doors don't have a lot of um, uh, stability to it. Uh, they're basically just three quarter. You know, I'll, I'll show you a picture of it here. Uh, I think I have the link in here of the uh, maybe I don't. Anyways, I, I described some of that in the video. We'll get into the video and then we'll get, get into more of these details here. But basically the pocket door framing, if, you go, if you're in a regular two by four wall, there just isn't enough um, st stability for towel work. I mean, or at least, I mean, I've done it over it before. It's just not ideal. You're better off to have a, you know, if you have the room, do a two by six, then you can get some real inch and a half material there and you're gonna have a, a much stiffer wall for that shower area. Now, as you can see, the, the shower faucet's on the side wall. So, you know, you, you really wouldn't be able to do any type of faucet wall with a pocket door coming in there. You, you would definitely need a, a lot wider of a space to be able to do that. So that's kind of why we did it on the back end. Uh, plus, I think it's gonna look really awesome having the uh, exposed plumbing um, shower fixture that we're going to have on the back wall. I'm really excited to put that in. I think it's going to be really neat. But let's get into the uh, course, the first video on this of the framing. And then, you know, I might pause and go over some things. Uh, I'll try to check with the chat, but I'll probably leave most of my Q&A towards the end, uh, especially unrelated problems or, or questions to framing. We'll definitely get into that later on here. So let's get started on here. And let me know uh, if audio is all good. It looks good on my end. I think I fixed my uh, earpiece, so you should be able to hear it out of both of your ears on this one. But let's get started on here. Okay, so framing. This is the part, if you take your time, it'll... Okay, why is that frozen? Okay, so framing. This is the part, if you take your time, it'll set you up to... I don't know why that's frozen. Oh, boy. See, I didn't want to do it on the computer because it might slow it down. Let me try to find that again. Sorry, guys. I don't know why that video framing layout. I think it's just having all of this um, stuff on at the same time kind of makes it. Uh... All right, let's try this. Okay, so framing. This is the part, if you take your time, it'll set you up to make things a lot easier throughout the project. 
And what I mean by that is just making sure that you have blocking for all of your fixtures, including your towel bars, and then making sure that you have enough space between where your fixtures need to be with uh, spacing on stud spacing. So all these things are really awesome to be able to plan out and build prior to putting the bathroom together. A lot of times when you're in an upstairs bathroom, you're kind of stuck with what you have and you usually don't want to have to cut out too many things to make things work. So being able to frame everything at this stage the way you want it is going to really make it easier. So I'm going to go over a bunch of tips on what you want to address and make sure that you have things in place to make things easier later on. So when it comes to uh, framing on a concrete floor, it really isn't too different than a normal wall. The only thing is, is you're going to be anchoring the actual uh, board, uh, which I would say is treated lumber. You want to use a treated lumber to the floor and use some three inch tap cons to tack them in place. There's many different ways to anchor a bottom plate, but I find uh, that the uh, tap cons are pretty much the easiest. The only other thing you want to be sure that you get ahead of time and be sure to check out that checklist, but getting a foam seal gasket, this is going to go underneath of the treated lumber so that uh, no moisture can actually go into the actual wood. Concrete is something that will always have a little bit of moisture and can soak up into the floor above. So uh, we'll go ahead and get our first wall done. Now I made this pretty tight. I could have gave myself a little bit of room and actually spaced myself out, but I really did kind of plan this to have a two by six straight up against this wall. So check. So foundation walls are usually never flat, usually never straight. So, you know, prior to you even laying out your bathroom, that's one of the things I should address at the layout area is that you want to, if your wall is bowed at all, you want to account for that so that you can move your wall out so that you can have a nice plumb wall. This wall isn't too bad, but it actually is needing to come out about a half inch. So I'm about, I'm, I'm basically bellowing out at the bottom and the bead plumb, I'm almost, well, that's almost a good one inch. So from the bottom up here to the top of the wall is about one inch, which actually does make it better in my situation because I have this plumbing uh, protruding out. So it almost looks like once I get this, we'll see once we frame up the wall, but it's gonna actually work in our favor that we have to bring the wall out this way because we'll be able to go tight against the bottom sill and then just bring our studs out. But uh, a lot of times there's usually bow right in the middle of the wall and that could be problematic. So you can do a couple of things to, ma to make this tight is one, you can actually scribe cut each one of your studs or uh, just make sure you give yourself enough room and have a gap in between the concrete block and the wall to be able to frame it. But I'm using two by sixes because I primarily want to frame in uh, the three inch stack. Now, if I only just had the two inch vent with my vanity and I didn't have this stack going upstairs, I would have probably just done a two by four wall on this back wall and encapsulated that. There's really no reason to go with the, the full two by six if you don't have to encapsulate other members like this. Okay, so this is a two by 10. This is longer than our bathroom. So I'm gonna just first uh, notch out around this piping. So just gonna make a mark. So to get this tight, yeah, I mean, we're not gonna have much of this left over, but you might as well keep it so that you can keep things straight, but basically five inches that we're gonna be cutting out here. My main concern here is the way I have my toilet. So we're about 12 and a half. So we do want to have this pretty tight up against this wall. And this is where if you would have gave yourself a little bit more room on the toilet, it wouldn't have mattered as much. So if you would have made a, like a 13 inch center, then you'd have plenty of wiggle room. But I'm So I just wanted to mention, yes, uh, please leave 13 inches. I'm kind of kicking myself now. You'll see later on in the video of why I'm going to be kicking myself for making that 12 inches. I should have made it 13, given myself a little bit of room. Um, but that, that is a really, you know, I hope you can learn from my mistakes here. <laughs> I mean, there's ways out of this. I mean, as I'll probably mention here shortly is that you can do a 10 inch rough end toilet 
Um, they're just a little bit more expensive because they're not as highly, you know, sold or whatever. Uh, so there are ways out of it, but if you would have left 13 inches, it would have been better off. And I've done that in the past. I'm not sure why I was uh, trying to be so ridiculously accurate here. And, and really, when you need to overcome uh, an unlevel wall, uh, that definitely can uh, be a problem uh, for sure. So definitely double check your own foundation wall. Give yourself some space. You know, I mean, if I would have even left, uh, you know, like a good inch behind that, it would have made no difference. Uh, for this, you know, the footprint of that bathroom and it would have made sure that, you know, the plumbing was encapsulated and everything worked. But I guess just, you know, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a learning lesson on every one of these jobs. So uh, if you can learn from my mistake, just make sure you get 13 inches on that center of that toilet. Give yourself a little bit of space off that wall um, and then you'd be able to overcome the plumbing. You'll see shortly uh, a little bit more of my mistake there as well. So tight because this is a small bathroom so uh yeah we're just going to want to pay attention to that now there are options if you could become wildly off on this you can always go down to a, a 10 inch rough in and have a smaller tank essentially that'll allow that toilet to move back further but this is uh this will just work out just fine so we got this in place and uh yeah we'll go ahead and well, actually, we'll go ahead and get a square wall crossed here so we know where we need to cut this. We're going to be doing a two by four wall on this side. And the main reason is, is I didn't need the depth here. I'm actually just going to be doing just as the faucet's going to be in this wall. And that's all there's going to be to it. But I do need to do a two by six wall on this side. So to encapsulate my... Uh, clean out. Now this clean out is actually going to be coming outside of the wall on the back side here, which will be the access to be able to snake it. So the whole clean out itself is about six inches wide. So it is actually going to be wider than the actual wall itself. Now, if you wanted to keep that completely hidden, you can use a two by eight wall, or you can just fur out this side wall on the outside and encapsulate it. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to do a two by six wall on this side. Okay, here we want to pay attention to our center, which we're about 15 and a half inches to center. So that works. Now I did, as you can see here, my piping was not tucked in far enough that way. It is kind of what it is. This is kind of protruding out to where I initially intended. I initially intended having 16 inches, but, uh, just with where my plumbing was at and not having being accurate enough on that, this is just gonna be fine. So you just wanna make sure you square things up. And then again, we're just paying attention to the center here because we have minimums that we have to be within on this part. So we'll just go straight up to the pipe and keep this square with the pipe. So we had already cut out the concrete right where we need it. We want it to be 17 and a half inches because we're doing a 35 inch shower pan. So this is gonna work out just fine here. So let's go ahead and just cut our studs. We're gonna get all the bottom plates on first and then start framing the main walls. We're doing two by six wall here too. And the main reason for that is because we're doing a pocket door. And this pocket door is gonna slide into the shower. And one thing about pocket doors, there isn't a lot of structure on them. So this is gonna help because my, the pocket door is only three and a half inches wide, the framing, and they have, it has one by on it. So if you just did a two by four wall, you're gonna have a very thin layer of um, horizontal one by fours that are gonna be the support for the shower wall. I don't really like that. I really wanna have an extra uh, inch and a half of depth so that I can actually have some real framing that I'll be able to mount my shower doors to and make sure that my wall is rigid for that. Now, you know, if you, have, you were in a situation where your 
bound to a certain distance and you can only use a two by four wall. You could certainly do that. I've done it in the past. It's just not ideal for tile work and especially mounting shower doors uh, because you're really only getting three quarter inch of depth and then having one buys that span across 16 inches horizontally don't provide a lot of structure. So this two by six wall is gonna do that and uh, make it a lot better, uh, more rigidity for that shower door area. Let me make sure. Okay, so then pretty sure I'm a little bit wider as well. So we're 49 inches. Uh, by the time we get my walls up, we'd be the biggest thing here I'm just concerned about is my tile layout and making sure that that's going to look right because I just wanted four pieces of tile across the back. So we can shrink this this way if we need to and uh, take that extra inch to make it a, a perfect 48 inches. Let me check out. All right, so four of these in a row. It's 48 and a quarter inches. Yeah, let's just go ahead and shrink this a little bit because I don't want to, I don't want any slivers. And uh, so we'll make this like 48 and a half. So then once I uh, put my wall board up, my backer board on the other side, I'll be about 47 and a half inches. So I'll be just cutting a little bit off of each side. I just don't want to have any gaps. And then I mean, we're going to make everything plumb but you want to just give yourself a little bit of wiggle room when it comes to that. So, all right, so 48 and a half. Okay, so yeah. Um, so it's definitely nice. I mean, basement bathrooms are a real treat when you're adding a whole new basement because you're able to adjust things, to modify things, make them what you want. And that's one thing about, you know, going upstairs, you know, you're kind of usually confined with what you have and you're trying to uh, make things work with the, the structures that you already have. So it's a real treat to be able to frame things and make things the way you want it. Um, you know, just keep in mind some of those things like centering that toilet. If you would have given yourself a little bit more room, would have made it much easier for you. Uh, but we're gonna get into the, uh, the anchoring next, but just to show you kind of where my course is at on how this is laid out, you know, I just, you know, rather than you going through that video and, and watching it again, I, I really like to kind of highlight some of the main aspects of it. And uh, just keep in mind, you know, just kind of some pointers so that you can just go back to this because, you know, probably a lot of you guys might be watching this stuff and then, you know, maybe eventually, uh, you know, once you're in the actual process, you're not going to want to watch that 10 minute video or try to scroll on YouTube to find it. And that's where the course is really going to help you out. But just a couple things to keep in mind. Most of your framing, you're going to want to be 16 inches on center. Uh, that's primarily any backer board, cement board, foam board, Schluter, Curdy board, whatever. And they're all going to want 16 inches on center. So you need to at least stick to that. So plan on being able to do that. Uh, you know, you're going to want to add some fixture blocking. Now, this is all stuff that we're going to be doing here in a little bit later in the process. And some of it I don't even have set up yet because I don't have any of the plumbing run completely fully yet. But you want to make sure you put, you know, fixtures in or blocking, I should say, you know, for where your sink's going to be, for where your toilet supply is coming out of the wall, uh, towel bars, accessories. These are all things that are going to make your project easier later on. If you put blocking in the wall um, for your, you know, towel bars, you know, you could actually use a regular drywall screw and anchor those things in and they'll never fall out of the wall like a lot of the drywall ones do. Um, keep in mind about your electrical boxes, where those things are going to be located. Um, also, your, uh, you know, shower door blocking. Make sure that you have blocking for that. Now, I'm going to go into the anchoring next here, but I just like to highlight this in this layout stage because if you just came over to... Um, framing layout at least you have some of the information here but I'm going to be using tap cons to actually adhere it into the concrete I think it's the most flexible you know I know it's a little bit expensive to buy a hammer drill I mean a lot of these um, kits now you're, you have a hammer drill with your impact driver so it's not too big of a deal I actually have a, a separate hammer drill altogether with an SDS bit 
uh, just because I do this stuff all the time. But um, I could see where you know some people might consider it to be a little too expensive to do the this, this screws. But this gives you a little bit more flexibility. You know, like if you didn't have your, if you screwed everything in and then you found out, well, I didn't have a square wall there, you can move this stuff around uh, with the screws. Once you start using a RAM set or something, you know, something like this, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of where it is at. And it's gonna, you're gonna basically ruin the framing pulling it out. So you have other options. I think the RAM set gun is a good idea. I mean, this is definitely the most productive. So if you're a contractor and you're, you're very, uh, um, you know, confident on where you're at with uh, your wall setup, this would be the fastest way to go for sure. Uh, and they may actually make guns that, you know, can, uh, don't have to, um, I mean, this is a kind of like a, what do you call it? Like a push, basically you use your hand to uh, butt it and, and, and make it, but they do make guns that have, I think, multiple nails or a, be a better gun for this as well. But, uh, you know, framing nail or uh, doing a ram set is definitely an awesome way to go. I definitely highly recommend it. And then you've got other anchors. It still requires a large drill bit, but these, um, these half inch uh, regular, uh, what do you call them? The wedge anchors, those are another really great system, but really tap cons are really all you're gonna really need. Uh, but if you did do the uh, ram set, definitely use like the yellow tip or the, the red tip bullets because uh, you're gonna need a little bit more power, especially in some of these old, this old concrete. You know, I, in this old concrete, in this specific house, it was so hard to cut, it was so hard to do anything with. I'd probably be getting the red tip because it's gonna have a little bit more gunpowder and actually shoot those things into place. Um, just definitely wear your ear guards. You definitely don't wanna lose hearing over something like this. Uh, we're gonna get into this next as well, but you wanna have the sill foam gasket on hand. That's you want to prevent having any moisture sucking into the actual lumber. And then, uh, as I was mentioning here, just pay attention to your existing foundation wall. If you have to overcome any unplumbness, make sure that you give yourself some space to make that a little bit easier for you. This particular uh, house really wasn't that bad. It was one inch off, uh, and really it was uh, the, the bottom uh, portion of the wall that was actually coming out. So it wasn't uh, too big of a deal. And all, obviously basement bathrooms are notorious for obstacles, duct work, plumbing, you know, there's nothing, you know, if I was, a, you know, anytime I do anything in a basement, um, I really add on at least 25% more time than what I initially think, uh, just because the framing is going to take you longer. Everything's going to take you longer in some fashion in a basement bathroom. I mean, once we get everything framed, it's going to be just like any other bathroom, but uh, all the unknowns of under what's underneath the concrete to um, refinangling things to the framing, it could just become a lot more time consuming. So uh, definitely pad yourself out. I mean, if I was bidding this job, I'd definitely be probably just providing a day and a half worth of labor to actually frame this. Uh, and, you know, so $1,500, $2,000 in labor to, to frame it, I don't think is too completely unreasonable. Um, now this includes everything. I, I didn't do the front wall yet on this one and, and install the pocket door framing, but uh, you know, I think it's, it's, you know, there's a, there's a warranted amount of time and effort to put into this that, uh, you know, it's, it's worth, worth the, the, the money if somebody uh, isn't gonna do it themselves. Uh, and then we just have the, you know, I was just going over those centers and why I'm doing with the two by sixes, um, referencing your shower drain. Again, it's really nice in the basement bathroom if you, didn't have your plumbing exactly where you needed it. You could cut the concrete out a little bit more and just extend things out and make it exactly where you want it to. It's really nice in that aspect. And then again, two by six wall because of the pocket door. I want to make sure that I have enough, um, you know, stability behind the tile work. So then I go over to consider. Yeah, again, like you, you, if you have the tile on hand, it's also great. You're able to really reference what you're doing. So then you're not trying to avoid slivers when you go to install it. If you're thinking, you know, I'm always, anytime that I'm doing uh, any type of renovation in a bathroom, I'm really kind of already thinking about the tile layout. Um, I won't, you know, even on a client job, I will not start a project that they don't know what they're doing yet when it comes to design and the style of tile. Um, you know, that's, it's, just don't even start the job because they need to know what that is so that you can make it easier for yourself when you get into it. Like in this particular bathroom, um, you know, these, these uh, three by 12 inch tiles, I wanted to just have three of them on each sidewall as well. So four on the back, 
three on the side and it's, we're not doing any mosaic borders we're not we're just going to be that green tile and probably like a light almond um, grout of some sort i'm guessing i don't know i haven't talked to my wife about what she wants to do on that but you know if i would have went with a 36 inch shower then my tile would have came right out to the edge of the tile and i wouldn't have any overhang at all for my shower doors so being able to shrink my shower pan down to 35 inches uh, works out perfectly because it'll have that inch and a half it'll make my shower doors look good um, and this is what's so great about being able to do something custom it really makes it uh, nice and streamlined so if you're a contractor definitely make sure that your clients know what kind of towel they're doing what they're doing it would be great if they had it on site too so you can make sure you can reference things because there's no point in stressing out and trying to come up with some kind of weird layout because you're going to have a sliver somewhere you didn't think you were going to have it um, you know, there's nothing worse than that. So if you think ahead of time, it can make it a lot easier. And then in here, I have all the different links to this. And I have to say, um, not sponsored in any way, but this is an awesome saw, the 36 volt um, worm drive circular saw. I love that thing. I use it. Uh, I've had that thing for a long time now, probably four or five years. And it really is. It's just as powerful as a regular saw. Highly, highly, highly recommend the Makita uh, worm drive saw. I mean, I like the worm drive. Because if anybody noticed, I have a missing finger, and that was from a Hilti uh, circular saw cordless. And, uh, you know, this thing, I mean, you have to be careful with these things. Don't underestimate a cordless saw. They definitely can uh, have a lot of kickback. But I like the worm drive because you're way extended out. And, uh, you know, even if you're holding a board or something like that, just the way the blade is so much further ahead of your other hand, uh, the likeliness of that kicking back is a little bit less and then the 36 volt really provides a lot of strength so I mean I, I you know I, I it's you know I can't say this as much as a corded saw because a corded saw will last you know continuously work but uh, you know it's definitely a saw that I feel like it's a little bit safer I just like having that blade in front of me uh, versus right right at your at your hand where you're holding it um, so yeah the the Cordless saws are nothing to mess around with for sure. And then you can always go to my uh, Amazon store. So I have a link to that. That provides all of my other different uh, products that I have in here. Uh, I have, um, where do I have? Towel tools, bathroom remodeling tools somewhere. I have bathroom remodeling tools somewhere in here. These are a lot of my videos here, it looks like. Uh, I need to go to see what other people see. Yeah, that's what I say. It's in, I don't know. Anyways, you got to shop around. I mean, Amazon is definitely not always the best, the best uh, route to go with uh, because some of it's a little bit more expensive. But I have all the tools in there. I have to find you the, um, the bathroom. Oh, here it is. Bathroom remodeling tools. So I got a lot of the different products in here that I use. So this is the framing nailer pass load gun. Now, you know, if you're a DIYer, um, you know, a framing nailer was always going to come in handy, especially if you're going to get into like framing out your whole basement. I definitely would recommend buying one uh, for that. If you were just doing the bathroom, I don't know. That's kind of that's a kind of a bit of an expense just to, to make it a little bit easier for your nailing things. So, you know, using screws are totally sufficient. It just takes a little bit more time to do all of that. So and then what's great is that if you're in the course, you have a question about your own bathroom, you can always leave me a comment. And what's great about these comments is that, you know, if it's specific to your project, I'm more than happy to help you out because I know that maybe that question could help somebody else out that has a similar situation. It's really hard to evaluate and, and demonstrate like all the different scenarios and all the different problems. I mean, this, like for instance, like this plumbing situation, probably no one will even have maybe a situation like this. So, you know, so it's definitely, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's hard to get every instance. So if you leave a, a comment, you leave, a, leave an image, and then I could get back to you on that to help you out. It's gonna help other people out in the future. And you know, it's a win-win all the way around. Um, and that's one of the reasons I don't even have a Facebook group, just so you know. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm going to, because the problem with Facebook groups is that you get a lot of the same questions all the time, but then no one's, no one's searching for anything. So like, you're just repeating yourself and yeah, you're helping out that one or two people, but you're never really having a, a, a valuable 
exchange because you're just kind of repeating yourself. And it's great that communicate. I love seeing people send their pictures, but you know, I'm hoping, you know, if you get into this course, you know, it, this is always going to be here. And the more I can build this out, it just seems like a more um, genuine effort, especially when you're able to just go to the exact area that you're having a problem. You're having a problem with your framing plan, you know, send a picture, you know, maybe I can try to help you out with uh, doing that. So we're going to get into the uh, anchoring, this is only like a three minute video on this one uh, because we're just literally just anchoring it. So let's get into that and then, uh, you know, we'll start actually framing the walls here. Okay, so we'll take our sill foam. We'll put this down across the concrete. Thirty-five for the shower right here. And I did want to leave some space for like a towel hook outside the shower. So thirty-five for the shower pan will be about thirty. Well, by the time I get my half-inch drywall and my other tile on here, we'll just say roughly thirty-eight inches is going to be total of where our towel work is at. So it'd be nice to leave a good eight inches here for a towel hook. So really the opening of the door, we're doing a 28 inch door now. So we're gonna be right about here, basically this entire section right here. So let me just put another screw over here. So adding that a little additional space changed the layout slightly from what I originally planned, but I felt it was important to have some kind of a rope hook or something on this wall, so that's why I'm keeping that distance. But, you know, ultimately, such a small bathroom, doesn't really matter where you locate the door, you're gonna be able to see the toilet. But originally, I was trying to keep this 30 inches so that, you know, you had complete privacy from that point, but, you know, the pocket door is gonna provide that. So we basically have a wall here of about 22 inches, and we'll still put our uh, switches. So you open up the door and your switches will be right here, and in our uh, thermostat for our floor heating will be on this wall. Let's double check squareness. <clears throat> I mean, my square did a pretty good job, but if these diagonals are equal, then we should be even. So nine foot. It's a little tough to judge where the edge of this is just because I don't have another piece here. But yeah, I mean, it's, essentially nine foot there. So that's one other way you can try to square it up is just figure out the uh, squareness of it. Okay, so yeah, um, yeah, doing those diagonals, I mean, obviously after you have everything screwed down, it's kind of a pointless effort there because <laughs> you know you have to unscrew it, but it, that is the flexibility of using the tap cons. And I wish that the uh, tap cons went in that quickly and I could just do it in three minutes. That definitely took a lot more time than that. I actually broke a bit in the middle of it and had to um, go out and get another SDS bit. But the, the Hilti hammer drill is really excellent. I really, um, I love it. I've been, you know, I've probably had that probably seven, eight years now and, and drilled hundreds of holes with it. Um, it's just a really expensive tool. Hilti makes some really expensive stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, that's really, you know, Mike uh, from YouTube asked me, Mike Miller, uh, sill seal for bottom plate. Yeah, you want to have that foam gasket underneath of the um, the floor. And that's just probably, especially with this, I mean, the, the treated lumber isn't like it used to be, you know. I mean, my uh, when I first started out, the treated lumber was definitely uh, a real treated lumber. They probably used a lot of toxic chemicals and it lasted forever. But this stuff... Um, you know, it'll dry out and it'll allow moisture to the wick into it. So if you don't have that sill seal, I don't know if you can see that in there. Maybe you can. 
it's still you can still see a little bit of underneath of that area but yeah you want to just make sure that you're preventing uh, any moisture from wicking into that uh, wood and then um, you know having any type of rot later on I just you know the, the like I said the treated lumber is just not what it is it used to be uh, and I would not uh, think that it would might last really a heck of a lot longer than any normal uh, lumber uh, if you allow concrete to uh, absorb water into it so um, and that's a, you know I said from the very beginning of a basement bathroom project uh, on, on previous live streams and I certainly highlighted in my course is that you definitely have to you know mitigate the water moisture issue in a basement before you put all this money into a space like this so if you're getting water coming into that foundation wall in any reason you're going to want to do like an interior French drain system or do something to uh, be able to pump that water out uh, but a lot of these old basements yeah I mean the moisture is going to come up through that through that concrete and then you know eat away everything else so we're going to be doing waterproofing over top of all of this uh, and that'll kind of make a big difference but we also put that foam uh, two inch foam directly below the bathroom but the outside floor where we're at uh, the sill foam is definitely a good idea so home rapid repair thanks for joining me on uh, YouTube I think I've seen a, a bunch of your videos out there. Thanks for, for being here. And uh, yeah, so looking at my uh, course, just kind of the highlight parts of this. Um, yeah, we're under the anchoring system here. So you could just come in here real quick, kind of just goes over uh, the basic points. Make sure you have your cell phone gasket. You can uh, click on the link, uh, be able to, I, I have some, a lot of things that are from, um, uh, Amazon because it helps out my channel, but you know, if, if it's just, it's really just about referencing what you're looking at. So Home Depot, you know, buy roll of this for 11 bucks and, and most of my plumbing stuff, I'm actually just, I just have it linked to supply house. So you could actually order online and get a decent price. Um, so, but again, like Amazon helps my channel out. Some of the stuff makes sense to purchase. Some of it is completely outrageous. So you really have to kind of do your due diligence on, on finding, but yeah, this uh, hammer drill right here, you know, it's expensive. I get it. I get it. It's expensive. You know, a thousand dollars for this thing. And you can get it in a kit where, where you'll be able to get, um, you know, an impact driver or whatever else in it. But this thing is a, a beast. It's definitely lasted a really long time. Been really, really happy with it. Um, you want to just make sure that you get, um, I, I like using the tap cons that are, have the hex heads on them. So you can use a five sixteenths um, drill nut driver. Uh, the ones with the regular, you know, um, number one or number three, I think it's number three. I can't remember, but the regular screw heads, the Phillip heads, um, they strip out really easily. And if you're in dense concrete, you're going to have a hard time screwing them into place. So if you do an, a hex head with a nut driver, you're going to have a much better time with it. Um, I even snapped a couple of screws in on this. So if it, they're snapping with the, the, um, hex head, there's no way you're going to get a regular, um, Phillips head uh, tap con in. I, I just I wouldn't even purchase the the the, the Phillips head. I would definitely just go with this. Um, the only time I would do it with the Phillips head is as I'm trying to make something flush mount because obviously that hex head is going to be sticking up outside of uh, the framing area. But for the sill plate, it's totally sufficient. And I also go over the other options again. Using that ramp set gun is not a bad idea. And just so you know, if you cut uh, <laughs> two by six, I already knew I was going to do this, but it was the blade was going bad anyways but if you cut into concrete like this uh on your sill plate you're going to ruin your blade so uh it was pretty much shot right after i did this so anything anytime you hit your uh, carbide blade on concrete it kind of screws it so but uh, yeah so that takes care of setting everything into place i also have uh, a whole bunch of different links in there and then um yeah i mean because if you become a diy Member, you'll be able to get this course now. I'm building it out as I'm going. Uh, so if you were interested in, in this course, you could check it out. Uh, it'll be in my DIY Geek membership. So that is uh, basically where I have all of the videos, uh, basically all my courses. So I have a whole bunch of different ones. Um, I'm sure a lot of you've seen them before, but we'll get into that a little bit later. I wanna get move on to the actual framing portion uh, of it because this is another about 10 minute video. I really try. Well, I'm, every time I'm on here, I'm always here for an hour. So it is what it is. So I hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, and leave some comments. We'll try to do some Q and A here a little bit later. 
So, all right, so let's get into the actual framing. And, uh, you know, when it comes to this, just take all of your traditional methods and just throw them out the window because uh, basement framing, uh, first off, it's not supporting. You know, you already have your foundation wall and you already have everything uh, supported above. So this is strictly just to separate a room. And with all this plumbing and all these different things, sometimes you just can't really sometimes get to that traditional, you know, top header uh, type of situation. And so you'll see here how I go about this. You really have to think outside the box sometimes to get things to work to the way you want. And I'm hoping some of the stuff I have in here too will prevent you from making some of the same mistakes. Um, and you'll see here what I mean by that. So let's get into this video here. Okay, so now it's just a matter of framing out your back wall, paying attention to your features. But what I would advise, so we have all this plumbing kind of hanging down in the space here. And to put a top plate up is going to be pretty problematic because of uh, this is actually down below the joist area. So what I'm going to recommend is just set your two side pieces first, your two end uh, studs, and then run a chalk line. And then you can just run your studs up against into the joist bay and just nail them into place. So we're trying to stay within 16 inches on center. Uh, and that's really just primarily just for the backer board restraint. And that's what you kind of want to have in drywall. But if it's 17 inches, if even if it's 18 inches, it's not a big deal. But I am going to be paying attention to my fixtures and making sure I have enough space for my water supplies and in the type of... Um, faucet that we're going to be putting in here, I want to make sure uh, that we don't have any blocking in the way. So uh, that's really going to be the easiest way. Set your two ends, put a string line so that everything's nice and straight. But since we have this whole bottom rim joist or uh, bottom plate here, we can just follow that and it'll be pretty straight. If we put this right on the edge here, it looks like we're going to probably be a little bit underneath of this joist. So if you make this completely plumb, and that's, that is giving us a good three quarter inch gap between the top of this, but we're tight down at the bottom. But we just wanna make sure that this is plumb. So one quick trick here, when you bring your string line across and you tighten it, so if you just go a couple of strings, you can go wrap it around a couple of times, but then just take your string and wrap it around backwards. And that, it doesn't create a knot, but it holds the line. And if you needed, this is pretty tight here, but if you needed to get it tighter, it's, you know, you just pound in your nail and get it right to the edge there. But that'll keep your string line taut if you just bat, take the string and wrap it backwards. It's not a knot, it's just something that'll keep that string taut. And same thing here, if this isn't tight here, just hit your screw in a little bit further, make sure it's the edge there. But you can also see, this is how much of a gap I have behind my studs. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's that whole wall kind of going out that direction. So, actually works really great for us with uh, all the plumbing that we have to overcome. But you just want to make sure that these two studs are completely plumb and then you can just bring everything to that. We're going to have our shower here. And it's, again, it's going to be 35 inches for the actual shower pan area. And we want to put a recessed niche on the back here. So, you know, really most of the time I just go about 16 inches on a uh, 36 wide wall. That gives us like 10 inches of room on either side and uh, that should work out great. So you could always uh, frame or have add framing for your niches and make it a little bit wider than actually what you need it, just so that in case you wanna shrink it, you can, you can always shrink it. It's easy to add more layers of foam board or cement board than it is to have to move the studs. So I would recommend if we're gonna need 16 inches, maybe make it 18 inches and then you can just shrink it in when you need it. We'll make it, um, so 17 and a half is our center. And then we'll, we'll just go ahead and make our total 
width between the rough framing uh, nine inches. So that gives us plenty of room on the other side of that. So that gives us like an 18 inch wide opening for our niche. And then if we decide we want to shrink it, we can. So this is going to be our drywall catcher for the corner essentially. Thirty-eight inches. We're just going to say that's relatively where the end of the tile is going to be. Thirty inches over for the the toilet because you need at least to have fifteen inches of room on either side of the toilet. So that basically gives us thirty inches of room between the tile and our minimum spacing. So we're about uh, yeah thirty thirty inches. So that's about you know almost roughly even right here. Now I got this pipe. This is for our lavatory upstairs. So I think what we're going to do is just simply put a stud right against here and then just put another stud on this side. It's not pretty, but sometimes it's necessary to do some uncommonary things just to be able to get this to work. So, but it's really just a drywall catcher at the end of the day, and that's really all you're looking for. So we'll go ahead and move on and uh, have a couple more studs. All right, well, I tried. I thought that this was gonna be fine, but this plumbing is still way outside of my wall. I thought I was gonna be able to just make it, but I'm, <laughs> I'm a good half inch um, outside of here. So what I'm gonna have to do is fur out all these studs a half inch. I'm just gonna get a, a half inch piece of plywood go over everything and then just obviously keeping it away from where the pipe is so that when I put the drywall over it will be good. But in some ways it'll be actually kind of nice. So we're going to do the insulation and everything first before we do any of this furring because I want to get insulation on all of this wall. But what will be nice is having this plywood on here so that I can actually just put, if I wanted shelving, my mirror, my light fixture, everything could be just screwed right into that piece of plywood. So, and in some ways it'll make it nice for any type of accessory. It's basically gonna be blocking for everything. Uh, but uh, yeah, I should have paid attention to that a little bit more closely, but this is one of the things with basement bathrooms. There's always, you know, challenges to overcome. And, uh, you know, framing is definitely one of those things where you just, you have to keep, you know, keep at it to get it right. But now we have a nice flat wall. I mean, everything's flat, so we can just shim this out and get ready for the drywall. Oh yeah, you can see it sticking out. Can you? Uh, no, not really. I mean, like if you go like that, yeah, you can see the little bump, see it? Yeah. Go ahead and frame this wall. Okay, so the only thing I have to pay attention to here is my center line. So basically the center of the shower is gonna be 24 and a quarter 
rough framing. So I just want to leave six inches on the other side from that center so that I have enough room for my piping and to be able to attach my exposed um, valve. Now, uh, typically 12 inches is usually enough for most valves, but you just have to pay attention how bulky it is and you know how you're going to actually elbow the um, water supplies to it. So, but in this instance, six inches off a of center line, it's going to give us plenty of room and it'll have some blocking in between for uh, to be able to mount the actual PEX adapters. So pretty simple on this one, just two by fours, keeping everything six, at least 16 inches on center. So that should do it for now. Um, we'll get our wiring run. We're gonna leave this front wall open just for demonstration purposes. We're gonna need to get to put the vent fan in and we're gonna run some of our electrical. Um, I might frame up this wall just because of our switches are gonna be right here. But I kinda of wanna leave this open so that we can actually get some better footage. Um, but yeah, it's amazing how much lumber you can go through in just a little small room. I actually have to get a couple more two by sixes to be able to do this. But uh, yeah, we'll call that a day for right now. And then tomorrow we'll get into the electrical and do some of this vent fan work. Okay, so yeah, no doubt about it. Um, yeah, <laughs> Dustin Anderson on uh, YouTube mentioned that, uh, you know, he's glad to see that it's nothing, everything is perfect. Um, and I definitely don't show the perfect Scenario, HGT people always have uh, nothing goes wrong and everything's done in 48 hours. I see no point in creating videos that speed through things and make it look like it was effortless or that there was no problems because in the real world, you're overcoming, you know, honestly, a lot of your own mistakes, maybe things that you didn't think ahead of time on and, um, you know, whether that's uh, your tile layout, you didn't think long enough about it, you didn't pay attention and you know, you're trying to overcome things um, or, you know, just like this framing, you know, that, that, that plumbing was sticking out of the wall further than I, than I thought it was going to be. And so now I'm going to have to add some shims on it. And then most likely, since I didn't give myself that much room for the toilet, I'll probably have to go with a 10 inch rough in toilet and then, you know, have to eat the extra expense on, on that. So um, it's really not that bad. I mean, I think it maybe it might be another 50 bucks for the toilet because of the, uh, you know, they're just not as commonly sold, so it's not a big deal. But uh, yeah, I mean, I really see no point in, in demonstrating and trying to gloss over because, I mean, I'm not even really, you know, most of this stuff that I have here online, it's not about getting contracting jobs anymore. You know, I'm not trying to uh, gla glaze over things. You know, I mean, as you can see, a lot of my jobs, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get cleaner, better at things, but um you know, I make a mess, you know, and, uh, and I'm not, I'm not hiding that. Uh, it, it is what it is. And if you want to be quick and efficient, sometimes you have to uh, forget about the cleanup that, um, you know, or just doing things repetitively to make it look perfect because you'll just be there forever. Uh, if you want to do a bathroom in a, a, a timely fashion, uh, seven to 10 days is most of my bigger projects. Now, if, if I was a contractor doing this project here, I would definitely account for three weeks. This would be 15, probably close to $15,000 labor and then plus uh, all the materials. So we're probably going to be about 10 grand in labor or uh, material here. So you're talking about $25,000 to do this bathroom. Um, I don't think that's unreasonable. And I think that you need to account for three weeks just because of the complexity of things. And, uh, you know, you're going to be doing something every day. You might not be here full on eight hours a day, but you know, whatever. So, um, a lot of guys get confused, ba uh, basement framing, almost each stud is a custom fabric situation home rapid repair on, uh, YouTube. Yes, you're absolutely correct. That's why you got to take kind of some of the traditional methods out of the equation. You're not going to be framing up walls on the floor and then raising them in any of this type of situation. There's just too much plumbing, too many things in the way. And at the end of the day, this is not a support wall. This is just to encapsulate the bathroom. So there's no need to make this a structural, um, you know, like it's gonna hold any support above it. 
Uh, no, I mean, I agree that you, you know, being able to frame on the floor and lift it up into place is the, it's the best way to go. And, um, you know, if you were doing support uh, above it, if you, you know, whatever, an addition, yeah, you're going to want to definitely frame that and then raise it. But in a basement bathroom, it's, it just doesn't, it's not going to happen. In a lot of remodeling, it's not going to happen. Um, I don't really ever frame a wall on the floor and raise it in any remodeling project that I can think of where that makes sense because it's all you know just trying to the, the angle of getting it into place becomes an issue and you're banging you know you're basically banging on the top plate until it's in the place it doesn't work out very well um it, it, you know in a remodeling situation new additions second floor additions yeah absolutely but uh when it comes to this type of stuff everything's custom everything takes a little bit of creativity um to be able to get it to work right but if you use those string lines, um, definitely going to help you out uh, and, and keep you uh, straight. That's the most important thing that I can say is making sure that uh, everything's nice and straight and flat so that when you do the tile work, it makes it a lot easier. But looking into my course, kind of highlight all the same aspects of this. This is just to kind of remind you. Uh, so if you're in the middle of the project, you just scroll down here, kind of go through the images and then just... Um, you know, kind of come up with, uh, you know, reminders. So it's actually called a clove hitch. Uh, I, I believe that's what that knot is considered that I'm making on here to make that uh, string line taunt. I try to get a video of it close up, but it, it makes, you know, my fingers are in the way and it's like impossible to really show it. But I'm, I, I did look it up and I'm, I'm almost positive it's considered a clove hitch that you end up making that makes that easy and nice and taunt. But uh, yeah, simple things like that uh, will... Uh, you know, make it a lot faster. You know, you have to add some blocking. That's again, that's where it's kind of nice having the tap cons. Um, now, obviously, you could have used a RAM set for that, but then you're kind of really uh, you're stuck with what you nailed into place there. You don't have any fudge room. This was I was able to, to move around if I needed to. So, um, and then my miscalculation here is that the plumbing. I'm going to have to add some uh, furring strips to this, and then. But I, like I said in the video, it's going to be nice because I'll be able to actually have some significant blocking to put my uh, mirror on and and every and mount all my uh, accessories and everything too so um yeah so that's really it i got all the, the links to different products down there that you might be interested in check out in my amazon store for for more help on that but again this is uh all all right now like you can get what i have completed to this point in my diy geek membership so the DIY Geek membership has all of my courses. Let me grab myself here. Why am I? Ah. Why am I not being able to grab myself on here? Anyways, let's just go into it. Yeah, so the DI membership includes all of my courses. I have uh, six courses as of now. This will be my seventh course. Uh, and what's great about this is I do link a lot of the other different scenarios to different parts of these other courses because uh, it helps kind of explain um, different aspects, different situations uh, in, in the course. So whether it's plumbing related or, um, you know, a toilet flange installation, I have different scenarios in each one of these courses. So I always link something that's going to be helpful and, and relevant to the tutorial I have. So having the, the DIY gig membership really makes a lot of sense because I kind of, you know, tie everything into itself uh, to be able to explain any questions on things. But I put a lot of time into the Ultimate Curblish course earlier this year. Uh, three different showers that go over curbless showers. Now these are all uh, basically second floor bathrooms over framing. Uh, this is this curbless shower. Uh, I'll be probably linking something to this ultimate curbless shower to go over to this basement bathroom to show the actual um, setup on, on the curbless shower. But each one of these put an enormous amount of effort into it. I think you'll get a, a, a tremendous amount of value. If you're a newer contractor, this is definitely something that, um, you know, 200 bucks, you shouldn't even think about. You're going to be able to uh, not only be able to get my advice on things, but, um, you know, really should be able to help you out. I think that... Uh, if I was a younger contractor, you know, bathrooms is what I'd be definitely getting into because it's there's high demand and you can really make a good living at it. There's no question about it. And and really the portfolio pieces are just so easy. You know, you take a picture of these bathrooms 
and you're going to be set for life. It's so easy to advertise. You just go on Facebook every day, post an image of some of your towel work, and you'll be getting leads all day long. I mean, you know, and, and the baby boomers, you know, I mentioned this before, is they're the ones with the money right now. They're on Facebook. Go to Facebook, post, tell them you're available, tell them, you're, you know, tell them the way that you do business. You know, maybe even, you know, you don't have to necessarily put up an estimate, but just, you know, kind of give a, uh, a high level overview, you know, of your process. I come out and take a look at your project. I create a, uh, an estimate, you know, tailored to what you want to do. Um, just kind of, you know, be straightforward with what, how you go about doing things and you'll easily be, able, easily be able to give, make a good living out of doing something like this. So, um, you know, that's, I'm really, uh, I think we, we really need more tradesmen in, in out there. I know for sure that, uh, we're really, um, kind of hurting in that area. A lot, not a lot of people want to get into this. There's a lot of good reason, but you know, you're definitely talking six figures easily. I mean, at these days, that's not even that much anymore. But, uh, you know, there's no question, $150,000, $200,000 a year uh, gross. Uh, you could be making, doing bathrooms. There's no, there's so much demand out there. There's a lot of older homes that need to be fixed up. Not going to be easy, but it's definitely going to be uh, something over time you'll be able to get very quick and efficient at doing. So, uh, Logan got your seven-day course. It has helped me immensely in doing my own bathroom. Still got more to go, but I'm getting there. Thanks, Logan. I really appreciate YouTube. Um, yeah, I, I really love seeing things like that. Uh, you know, I, I really, the seven day course, um, you know, I think has a little bit of an extra uh, highlight, especially geared towards contractors in a way, because, uh, you know, I basically have that pattern or that method uh, that I have laid out on how to do this in an efficient manner. Um, this is, you know, a basic bathroom, basically a five by eight bathroom, a more traditional style so it's it's easy to kind of replicate and redo things basement bathrooms forget it it's uh it's so hard to um you know really each situation is going to be completely unique in a lot of ways uh but at least if you uh you know know what you're in for or at least uh kind of take my guidance in in what i have here i think it'll definitely help you out to be able to at least estimate it especially since i'm getting into the nitty-gritty and doing all this uh homework for you on <laughs> on what the, I mean, obviously the prices change over time, but just having every single plumbing fitting in here, having all the framing, having all the electrical, you know, having every single thing accounted for, uh, at least, you know, I was even surprised. I think I've been leaving money on the table, uh, not, not charging enough for things. And because I'm not, uh, being, doing my due diligence and finding out what some of the material costs are going to be. Um, it's, it's kind of amazing how things add up. Uh, but having every, you know, even my, um, you know, like sawzall blades, uh, accounting for my, uh, what are you, oscillating tools, the white scrubby pads that I use to, to clean the grout, um, you know, the Diablo framing blades, those are 12 bucks a piece, you know, all these things add up tremendously, uh, and you're, you know, like your tools are going to wear out as well, so you have to kind of allocate a certain amount of money for some of this stuff and even on this job i bought a new laser so i did buy this um I, i'm actually really happy with it that was a great deal honestly 150 bucks this huber uh, i see a lot of towel contractors out there using this and um, this is just as good as the dewalt no question about it from what i can tell it has just as much power it has the green laser um i love it i mean i, I think it's going to be something that uh I could highly recommend. This is gonna be my first job with it, but so far what I've been using it for, 150 bucks is a heck of a deal. I mean, um, or a reasonable price, I should say, because the green lasers, I don't know why they cost more overall, but um, you know, the DeWalt one that I had was 450 bucks, you know? And so you can even see here, I purchased it uh, March 15th. So um, yeah, I don't know, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. But you have to account, what I'm saying is that you have to account for some tool allowances, even if you have most of this stuff, you know, I mean, um, there's going to be things that, um, add up on you, but like, even like the heavy metal blades to cut, cut some things, you know, cut some of the, uh, the metal out, those are 20 bucks a piece. So, you know, it's just, a, it's a, something that, um, you know, I'm going to look at this even when I go bid out at the next job and okay, all right, I need to, you know, account for that. You don't, you don't want to be under underestimating on material costs, especially these days where things keep costing more. So, uh, Scotty, been watching your videos for a while. 
and they've been great in so many ways. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it off of YouTube there. Uh, Bambo, Banio, uh, Hernandez, I'm specialized in bathrooms and kitchens. Awesome. Uh, I always, uh, you know, I consider doing a kitchen remodel, but man, those things are so, um, what do you want to say? It's kind of like this basement bathroom in a sense because it's like each kitchen's a little bit different and uh, it's really, um, what, do I, what do I want to say? It's just, it's everything's so specific uh, to each home. There isn't really, I mean, I guess there are a lot of homes with kitchens that are kind of have the same layout, but they don't, um, it's, there's so many different options when it comes to the cabinetry that make it kind of difficult and uniform to give it advice on. I'm sure there's a lot of things in there, but I got away from kitchens because I think bathrooms were just enough for me. Like it was, you know, it, there, there's enough to learn in bathrooms and to try to get efficient at that the kitchens kind of just uh, stressed me out. And I, and I don't do, I mean, I have the software now to be able to measure out and come up with a, a thing, you know, a, a layout of your cabinets, but that takes a lot of time too. And um, so yeah, it's, it's tough. I mean, if it, the right client, it would have to be the right client for me to do a kitchen for, but I, I'm sure, uh, you know, that's definitely, it's, I've always been the thing, kitchens and bathrooms, kitchens and bathrooms. And that's definitely what sells places too, you know? So, um, but, um, uh, Dustin, you asked me what trailer size trailer. So yeah, it's never big enough, but I have a eight by six, 14, 14, eight by 14. Um, 16 would have been actually a bit nicer. So I could actually get uh, 16 foot lengths in there, but I'm, I'm due for a new one of those too. Cause it, might, it might, my trailer is pretty, pretty worn down. So is my pickup truck too, honestly. And I, I keep looking at the prices of things. So I just can't believe how much things cost. And uh, yeah, that, those are all big overhead things. I, I do feel bad for any newer contractor getting into this. I mean, there are some things that kind of fluctuated a little bit where some of the tools have actually kind of been a little bit less of a cost, but then, you know, I mean, things like a pickup truck, you know, are, are definitely a lot more expensive and a lot higher interest and a lot higher payments on it and hard to keep up with. Um, so yeah, I definitely sympathize for anybody who is trying to get everything together. Um, uh, and you know, the tool trailers were always my go to, I like to be able to just leave the trailer in the driveway at the home that I was working on and then have all my stuff there. And I'm not dragging that back and forth. Never got into the van thing. I think vans make a lot of sense, but you know, that's a lot of wear and tear. You're putting a lot of heavy stuff on that going back and forth. So, uh, John, I'm in Pennsylvania, I'm in Pittsburgh. So, um, yeah, off of, off of YouTube here. So, all right, that's about it for this evening. Um, we're going to uh, definitely check, come out here on Thursday. I'll definitely have an announcement or a, like a scheduled event. I'm going to go over this part where we're going to actually do the, 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 the shower and I'm going to go over the heated flooring system. And I have a special guest that I think most of you will know, at least on YouTube, uh, that, uh, you know, he's going to give us some, some of his advice. He's been somebody that's been kind of a mentor to me. So I'm, I'm really uh, excited to, to have him on. If I can get all this technical stuff working, should be able to get him here on FaceTime, but he's going to hopefully give me some, some of his tips, some of his, uh, you know, years and years of experience on things uh, when it comes to mud beds and stuff. So, all right, guys, thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video. Please give me a like on this video. It helps out other people find it as well. Take care.